there's the red face, which is labeled ETT or erythemato telangiectatic rosacea, where it's just redness and no lesions. There's the papular form, which is the little bumps on the cheeks. There is phimidus, which gives you a nasal overgrowth of sebaceous glands that becomes fibrotic. And there's ocular rosacea, which gives irritation and styes or hordeola in the eyelid. You can have one of these, you can have all of these, and you still get the diagnosis of rosacea. There's many potential mechanisms. Um, blushing and flushing is the hallmark of rosacea, so clearly a vascular component. And it's nerves that tell the blood vessels to open, so there's a neurologic component. When I personally was made aware of Demodex nearly 40 years ago, the diagnosis of demodicosis was almost never made, even in the university milieu. And the role of Demodex in rosacea was highly controversial, practically never mentioned in the dermatology textbooks. Why? Well, because this parasite was considered a priori as non-pathogenic. Students did not even hear about it during their seven years of medical study. So most general practitioners were completely unaware that humans are bought a mite in their skin. And this is what initially aroused my curiosity. But they tell not how they, we must exclude this. And it's impossible because rosacea have a, a, a lot of uh, hemodex. And another author, um, uh, a Dutch author, uh, said was the, the um, the, the, the patient have, uh, well, eh, sorry, the patient have demodicosis with papular pistils when there is no erythema. No, but um, it is not true also because uh, we, we have, uh, we have a high demodex density in the papular pistillar rosacea with erythema and they are uh, the same density and both uh, um, go well with the ivermectin uh, treatment or benzyl benzoate treatment. Mm -hmm. So it's the, this confusion is developed.